friends! Welcome back to my channel, Ginger here. And today, finally, I'm going to show you guys a bookshelf tour. I've been putting this off because I'm a procrastinator and uh, that's pretty much it. But it's a nice day, the lighting's decent, and I've decided I just need to do this so I can get it edited and get it out to you guys. So we are going to do that. And I'm excited, if not nervous. So I'm not going to be pulling out every single book, but I will be going over these shelves individually and telling you what is on them, what are some of my favorites on the shelf, and anything that stands out so you guys can get a feel for my taste, my shelves, and yeah. I just think uh, everyone has their different tastes for whether or not they like the books being pulled out individually, and that also takes a really long time, and I don't feel like editing all of that. So, we're not going to do that. But I still hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoy learning about my books. And yeah, I probably won't see you face to face again in this video. So make sure to hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you're interested. And I will uh, see you all in my next video with my face. But uh, until then, enjoy the rest of this one. <laughs> So I'm going to start with this first shelf which is a three tier that has multiple purposes but it does have books on it. And so first and foremost this is a place for my printer. And second and foremost is a place for my art supplies. And then third and most importantly it's a place for books. So like I said this first shelf is a place for my art supplies. We have sticker paper, normal paper, cardstock all here uh, for my Etsy and whatnot, which has been uh, going decently, but I don't have extra stuff for it yet because I've been on a creative block. And this little plastic bin here has supplies in it, um, that kind of stuff, stickers, other stickers, that kind of stuff. Then over here we just have an extra bullet journal, uh, markers, a little foxy in there. Um, ink and envelopes. And then we move down to the middle shelf which is mostly classics and historical fiction. So we have here my Narnia collection which I've had for a very long time and I still have actually never finished the series so if you guys are interested in me reading the entire Narnia collection let me know because I would be willing to do that for a video. And then moving over a little bit, we have a stack of historical fiction, like I said. Uh, some of these were mostly just advised because people influenced me to get them because they said they're great, like Outlaw Outlander, well, Outlander, The Goldfinch, and The Nightingale. And the other ones have been just random pickups. And so, moving over, I guess I will pick this up. Moving over here, again, we have more historical fiction and, like I said, classics that I'm interested in reading. And then moving down to the last shelf on here, we have mostly all animal books um, in one historical fiction that couldn't fit on the top shelf. So we have a James Harriet collection which I really plan- I really would like to do a reading vlog for. I have the entire quartet and I've yet to read the entire thing and I think that could be fun. It's something unique to me that I know no one else has probably done so that could be fun. Um, we have some more cl classics like Watership Down is one of my favorites of all time. We have Bambi, um, some nice good books that some of them were from my childhood as well. We have some oh, uh, 
Bruce Cameron that I actually won in a giveaway a couple years ago. Um, I've read A Dog's Purpose, but I have not read the other ones. And then over here, we mostly have my chicken soup books that are from my childhood, a few other ones, and then The Lilac Girls is the one that belongs on the top shelf but I didn't have room for. But yeah, that's probably one of my most unique shelves that is different from other people on booktube because I am an animal lover and I love reading animal books. So I, I do really like this shelf even though it's really not like organized but it, it speaks most about me so that's why I like it. And then we're going to move over to my other two short shelves here which this is all new and organized. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> I'm still working on like how I want it to look but we do have some plants over here. I'm a new plant mom. I've never had plants before. We have an aloe, succulent, and there's actually a little clover glowing, growing in my succulent. That's cool. And then we have this prized possession which is um, an Archer book. Archer is one of my favorite TV shows and it is the art of Archer so it goes with books and art and it is signed by tons and tons of people so that's really cool in my opinion I mean I love this I love this book so that's why it's on top of the shelf and plus it won't fit anywhere else and then over here we have a stack um, that doesn't really have any place on the shelves yet so I just had them backwards um, some classics and then these were actually for a video that I failed doing so uh, there's still ones I'm actually interested in reading I just failed the actual video so that's why they're up here in the stack and I just have some figurines on top and then this is a big mural that my sister got me for Christmas with lights around it and it's really fun but that is the top and now we will move on to a shelf so the first shelf here is my adult fantasy mass market paperback collection, which is a majority of my adult fantasies, not gonna lie. Uh, so we have some of my really highly anticipated reads here. We have Brandon Sanderson, Patrick Rothfuss, Brent Weeks, like a lot, a lot of books. Uh, my Eye of the, or my Wheel of Time collection some other things so this one is a shelf that I really really love and I have actually read barely any of the books on here so we need to change that this year keep me motivated moving down here we have uh my entire woman's murder club collection by James Patterson I am really behind I have like uh five books to read so <laughs> sucks to be me but they're all here they're all not the same <laughs> we have the majority as paperbacks which i really would like to get the rest of the series in um, but i haven't yet because books cost money and then as we move over we have a few more fantasies and my graphic novels so um this actually is a book i need to read However, it is water damaged because it was left out on my porch without me knowing and it snowed and got icy. So I think it is still readable, but it is not in the best shape. And this is actually a, a highly anticipated, I put it back in, uh, book that I didn't even realize until now. So it was supposed to come out in February. I'm a little behind. Uh, but again, it's water damage, so I was worried. But I think it's actually readable, so we will add that to my TBR. And then, like I said, a few more fantasies and my graphic novels. I don't have the biggest collection. And actually, these three are not mine, but they're on here. Um, but I do have The Eye of the World as a graphic novel. And then Fables is my all-time favorite, followed very closely by Saga. But I don't own any of the Saga books. And then we have a really cute little Dr. Seuss book that is in Spanish that I got from my Spanish teacher um, who I had for five years so we became pretty close. It has a cute message in it but we will leave that for there but that is this next shelf and then we'll move on to the last one for this bookcase. The last one has some more James Patterson um, in mass market and then a few other mass market paperbacks that I have. 
that look pretty crappy, not gonna lie. They're all thrift books, so they're, they're well worn, but I don't have a problem with that. They are what they are. And then we have some of Zach's books right there, and then those are two new ones that I have yet to put anywhere, but there is historical fiction and classic, so they technically go on that shelf that's full. But yeah, this one's a pretty boring shelf, that's why it's on the bottom. And now we are at my Stephen King top shelf, which is almost fully Stephen King with a little bit of extra stuff in there. But yeah, this is all of my mass market Stephen Kings. As you can see, I'm not really picky about my books uh, when it comes to Stephen King, mostly, because it's about the inside to me and there's something also really just charming about having a roughed up paperback of King's books. I think it adds to his aesthetic. But yeah, I've read a lot of these. There's some I need to read and I'm really excited to read. And then we also just have a couple of my thrillers on there by Gillian Flynn and then the Paula Hawkins one because I didn't have anywhere else to put them and they fit on this shelf. So mostly Stephen King, which is exciting. And I don't even have all of them, but <laughs> still, I like this shelf too. Then we have more Stephen King, but they are the hard covers, so they had to go down on the next shelf, and they're all really thick and big. And it's still, still a lot of Stephen King. And then at the end, as we're getting down here, we have some mixed match stuff. We have um, just a few books that I like, a few that have some more story to them. So this one is actually an author that came into work and he sold me a book. It was really expensive, but uh, I was trying to support him. And then this one I bought going to meet Shorty Rossi. Um, if anyone remembers Pit Boss from Animal Planet way back in the day, I was obsessed. And so um, we went to meet him and he actually signed the book. So that was really exciting. And so that one is one of my more favorite um, pieces to my collection just because it is signed. But yeah, there's that shelf. The last one on here is just kind of a mix mash of stuff that doesn't really have a place. Um, so we just have some random books that I really want to read down here that needed a place to go. So some fantasy, some contemporary, some horror, just just a whole bunch of stuff. Graphic novels, manga, yeah. So that, that's this bottom shelf. It's not really exciting, but it shows you some of the books I have that probably don't get shared a lot. I do, yes, have the Twilight graphic novels because they're really beautifully illustrated. I'm not ashamed of that. Not one bit. So now we move to my big shelves and this is going to be a little difficult to film because, well, I'm going to be a little shaky. But we're going to do the best. I'm going to get this chair out of the way and show you what is all on these shelves. So starting at the top, we have some of my Warriors books, also Red Walls up there because I didn't have anywhere else to put it, um, plus two of my animal books, a dog one and then animals. I have a cat that I got when I was diagnosed with diabetes, it means a lot to me, it's cute. Um, then we have a cute little meerkat and my childhood dog Blackie, that also means a lot to me. So they're all up on my top shelf where Sermon can't chew them, and yeah. And then we have more Warriors books. That have no place on the other shelves and a cute little cat statue because it kind of fits with the theme. Moving down to the first shelf we have Warriors books. <laughs> um, I have like all of them so they take up a lot of space um, but this is all of the first four series yeah and then some little extra ones and then we'll just move right along and continue on <laughs> with the Warriors books more series in this in the thing and these are what we call special editions they are just extra stories that take place in the world and yeah there's just so many warriors books if you guys feel like counting and telling me how many i have go ahead i know it's an excessive amount um i even have double copies of some of them but it's fine because it's my favorite and i'm not ashamed to admit that so that, that's what the top shelves are dedicated to and then we move down to my first fantasy, mostly fantasy, some sci-fi shelf. 
Um, there's actually not many books on here that I have actually read. I hate to admit it, I've read Throne of Glass, Rebel of the Sands, The Diviners, The Crow Prince, Shadow and Bone, and Baron the Nightingale. That's it. So I have a lot of uh, stuff to read on the shelf. Some of my most anticipated are Nevernight and City of Brass. The next book in The Diviners I'm also really excited for. I mean, I'm excited for all of these because they're on my shelves, but those are like my favorites. I do have this also little candle, which is not, it's not focusing, but it's fine. It smells really good. Um, it's an enchanted candle, enchanted, um, so I thought it fit with the fantasy theme. And so that's why it's on that shelf. And then moving over, we have more fantasy, some contemporary that, these were from contemporary thon that I didn't end up reading and I haven't found a place for them again, so I just stuck them up there. But this is mostly just some more fantasy. We have my Infernal Devices, Hunger Games, Mar Dyer, um, and then a lot of first books in fantasy series that I need to read, and I've pretty much not touched most of them, but it's fine. <laughs> So that is that one. I, I got, I have a lot of first books in series for fantasy and I really just need to get to them, but I have a lot and they're intimidating. So yeah, I also have Beauty Queen sticking up there that I'm excited to read because Libba Bray has really great writing style, but it kind of doesn't really have a place on the shelf yet. So that's why it's just sitting up there hanging out. And then we move down to probably my favorite shelf because it has tons of my favorites on it. And that is this one. We have uh, a lot of my favorite series. We have ones that I'm really highly anticipating. We have a standalone that totally doesn't fit, but I had nowhere else to put it. So I, that's why I really, really like this shelf. Um, as you can see there, we have the Lunar Chronicles, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, Dark Shade of Magic, Six Crows, uh... Poppy War, Scythe, there's just a lot of good books on the shelf, that's why I really, really adore it. And I really would like to make it a priority to get this entire shelf as red by the end of the year, because I need one shelf that's all red, and uh, I don't think I have any besides the Warriors ones, but that doesn't count, right? That doesn't count. But yeah, there is just a lot of goodness going on on this shelf, that's why it's one of my favorites. Right beside that, this is also one shelf that I really enjoy and just because it has a lot more again fantasy on it mostly young adults some adult fantasy we do have some extra stowaways up at the top that again didn't have anywhere to put them but there's just a lot on here again that I haven't read but I'm highly anticipating um, Fire of the Orange Tree, Sorcery of Thorns, Illuminae um, we have some that were gifted to me I'm really excited for Robin Hobb because I've heard great things about her um, but I really haven't read a lot of these books, so we need we need to change that. But I really like the oranges on the shelf and the yellows. They just pop. And so that's something I like about it. And I don't know. I just I like how it looks, even though it's really just dull and there's no decoration. But it's my shelf and I like it. So, yeah. Moving down, we get into my thrillers. So over on this side is a lot of my arc thrillers that I've really enjoyed and if you can see the theme a lot of them are similar authors. Um, I actually have another one from Greer Hendricks and Sarah Peckinen that I have to put on there but I haven't talked about it yet in my wrap up so that's why it's not there but we just have a lot of thrillers. I've I say this one is a half and half shelf. I've read half I need to read half so we're again this is a shelf that I really want to get all read so I'm going to probably do a reading vlog doing that if you guys are interested uh, that way I can just go through read the books I need to read and get a book sh shelf that is all read books instead of a mix match but this side is probably like more of my favorite or most anticipated thrillers and they're all like my hardcover ones right there which so yeah that that's that shelf and then the next one over is more thrillers. Like I said, more thrillers over here. We have uh, a series that I like, which is the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series. I've only read the first one, but it was really, really good. So I have the rest <laughs> because I want to. Um, I I haven't read a whole lot on the shelf either. Uh, 
The Girl in 6E I have read. I've read Unravel, Sharp Objects, The Couple Next Door, and Big Little Lies. But I think the rest of them are unread. So I really need to make a dent in this shelf too. It's just really difficult to pick where to start with thrillers, I guess. <laughs> two more shelves, guys. Two more shelves. Moving down to the second to last, we have all of my arcs. Um, with a few extras mixed in. So we have our starting from 2016 all the way up to 2020. Pretty crazy. And I've actually gotten rid of about half of my arcs because I either didn't like them, wasn't interested in them anymore, you know, that kind of stuff. But I've read it probably over half, but there are some that are backlist over here and I'm planning again to do a reading vlog where I go through the ones that are backlist ones I haven't read yet and I read them because I feel bad that I haven't read them. <laughs> then again, we, like I said, we have a few extras. We have Wild War Girls up there. It's just sitting up there for some reason. And then we have four down here that just I didn't have anywhere to put. So they're there. But I have a lot of arcs. So I had to stack them like this. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with my art collection. And like I said, I've gotten rid of about half of them. So it's crazy how many I've gotten over the years. And some of them have been really freaking awesome. And I'm so thankful to the authors for sending them to me. Now we come to the last shelf, which has my Harry Potter collection. I know, my Harry Potter collection's on the bottom of the shelf. Um, they're all hardcovers and they're all really heavy in this my bookcases are actually just Walmart ones because I can't afford $100 bookcases right now. So they're not the sturdiest when it comes to having heavy books on top. So that's why, that's the main reason they're down here. And also I just, I didn't know where else to put them. Not gonna lie. Um, I really would like to reread Harry Potter at some point, but I, I just don't know when I'm going to fit that in. Um, and then we have some of my box sets down here. And just a few random ones that I love, but I don't have anywhere to put them, really. So we have mostly, like, romance contemporary, kind of. Um, so we have some of my favorites um, by Jenny Han and also Kira Cass. Some of my favorite romances are up there. Um, Legend is not, but I haven't read that, so you know. You know how it is. And then the Monstermologist series. I still need to finish that. And I've had that for a while. So that's that shelf. And those are my shelves, actually, all of them. Now that I'm done, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it really is a lot of books <laughs> when you think about it. So there you have it, guys. Those are my shelves. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions concerning them, um, how many books I have, I can total them up for you. Any of that kind of stuff I'm willing to do, but I had fun time filming this, telling you a little bit about what's on them, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. So thank you guys so much. Make sure to give this video a like if you liked it, and hopefully I will see you all in my next video. Bye!